Well, hello there. This is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and we're in the middle, or actually, probably more like the beginning of our one of our 10,000 subscriber road trip special. We are um, en route to um, Statesville, North Carolina, and Hickory, North Carolina. The reason for those destinations is because in Statesville, we're going to be checking out a dying but vintage looking and cool looking mall and um, it's it's called um, Signal Hill Mall I forget the history of that mall I'll um, when I do the voiceover when we walk through there I'll um, try to enlighten you on that and when we go to Hickory which is even further we're going to be checking out um, a restaurant I haven't been to in about 20 years I believe and it's a restaurant called Western Steer. Now, I've never been to this particular um, Western Steer restaurant, but they used to have one in Greensboro and one in um, Winston-Salem that I would go to as a child. But they closed all those down in the late 90s, and I haven't been to one since. But there's still one left near Hickory, and we're going to check that out on video as well. So, um, right now we're... Um, on the other side of Winston-Salem, west of Winston-Salem, and we're about to pass the um, Yadkin River, going into Davie County. Now, um, as you know, this video is um, commemorating 10,000 subscribers, although as of um, this recording, I think it's about 10,100, I think, <laughs> somewhere around there. And I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for um, all your support throughout the past 12 years of this channel's existence. I seriously am very, very grateful. I um, I would not be able to do any of this without you. You've given me the motivation to do these videos. Now, we've still got about 35 some miles to go until we get to the mall in Statesville, so um, let me uh, explain to you um, kind of the history of this channel. Um, I opened this channel, I believe, either March 7th or March 8th of 2006. I started this channel as a way to upload videos, um, well, not bit specific videos, but actually, well, it was specific videos. I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> they were for, um, as a way to upload digitized versions of the um, commercials from the Rugrats Marathon videotape that I've talked about before on this channel that I recorded back in 1994. But then, right after I opened the, my channel up, I realized that YouTube um, will uh, murder me for uploading copyrighted content, <laughs> and they were especially um, um, strict about that back in 2006. And this was around the same time Google um, bought YouTube, I believe. So, um, my channel pretty much remained dormant for most of the time. It was mainly, I mainly had that channel open just to um, favorite videos so I can have an easy way to go back to videos that I like watching. But then I decided, you know what, why don't I make a video and upload it and just see what happens. It was um, my very first video, um, which you may be aware of, the Carolina Circle Mall um, Memories for a Lifetime video, which was more or less a um, slideshow of pictures of the mall throughout its life. And that was uploaded in October of 2006, and the video is still there. Originally, it had a, um, a song by the Beatles on there called um, In My Life, but um, I re-did um, re, um, the audio there because that was extremely copyrighted there, <laughs> and I didn't want to risk losing my channel over that. So, um, I uploaded that. It, it, it got a reasonable amount of views. And then in 2007, I uploaded a couple of more videos um, about Carolina Circle Mall. I uploaded two videos I took in 2005 from when the mall was being demolished. 
and I think I uploaded one more slideshow video later that year. But yeah, um, for the first couple of years of my channel, um, it was mainly kind of a uh, extension of my website, homeofcarolinacirclemall.com, that I had going at the time. So I specifically wanted to use my channel, this channel actually, for um, videos about Carolina Circle Mall. And I remember um, I even had a few subscribers at the time. I had like six or seven, and I was just surprised out of my mind that I had that many subscribers on a channel that talked nothing about a, that only talked about a mall that no longer existed. But in 2008, I just dis I discovered a YouTube channel called. Um, Video Holic, who is still around, he is just one of the coolest guys ever, and he is the inspiration for how I do a lot of the videos on my channel these days. And um, and I decided to kind of model my um, channel after him in a way, and kind of branch out and do videos that aren't just about Carolina Circle Mall, so I can um, get more views and get and um, be broader, I guess. <laughs> so, um, there really weren't many videos about vintage computers um, at the time on YouTube, I don't think. So I decided to um, kind of remedy that. As you know, in 2005, I purchased a um, Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme, and um, I was obsessed with that computer and I decided to uh, make a video documenting um, that computer to show the world what a um, Packard Bell computer was like. So in November of 2008, I remember it was right before um, the presidential election, I did a video about the Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. And it was about a 10 minute video because keep in mind um, at the time YouTube only lets you um, upload videos, I think that were only 11 minutes. And so I uploaded it and it became a hit. People were intrigued by it, um, seeing an old computer like that. And that's where, I guess you could call it a meme, that's where the whole um, Packer Bell Navigator mouse lesson joke came from, for us from that video. And then I uploaded another video in early 2009 that was computer related about the computer I had recently built it was the first computer I ever built and from then on out that I guess um, that's history I think it was 2010 when I really um, started making videos like I do now um, putting them out on a regular basis because 2010 was when Value Village opened and I was able to um, expand my collection of vintage computers beyond the Legend 1510 Supreme. So I had a lot more video material. And this channel has been through a lot the past 12 years. Um, as you know, it was originally called Road Geek up until this past year. Um, on New Year's Day this year, it became the Nostalgia Mall. And the name change has been very, very successful. Everyone's been very supportive of that, and I thank you very much. So, anyway, um, I think we're near Moxville right now, which, believe it or not, this is a town named after one of my ancestors who fought in the Civil War. Now, the car we're driving is actually a pretty new car. We've only had this car a week now. This is a 2015 Honda Accord EX. We bought it used last week. It has 20,000 miles on it, roughly, and it, um, roadkill. Yuck. <laughs> and it is a wonderful car. This is the most I've driven it today since this is a pretty big trip. We're going um, pretty far out of town, I gotta say. <laughs> and yes, I will be doing a more in-depth video on this car um, within the next week or two, so look forward to that. So, um, I guess I'll start the video back up when we get near um, Statesville, so I will... Um... Okay, we're in Statesville now, and I think we're getting fairly close to the mall. We're going to be taking the exit after this one, I believe. We're on I-40, and we're going to get on um, I-77 South towards Charlotte. We're not going to Charlotte. I slowed way down here. 
Welcome to Statesville. All-American City in 1997 and 2009. Good for them. I'm glad they could do that. I've been encountering a whole bunch of slow-moving trucks on this trip. Okay. I'm hoping um, that this won't be the only road trip video we'll be doing this, this year. Um, as you know, a few weeks ago I took a trip to Charlotte and went on a thrift store run. Well, since it was so successful, I'm considering going back again in like August or September and doing the um, same thrift run down there, and um, this time I'll try to document it on video for you guys. Heck, we may even drive into South Carolina. How about that? <laughs> okay. And we're heading west. Um, we're actually headed toward the mountains. We're not, I don't think we'll be going near the mountains even when we get to Hickory, but maybe we'll see some mountains today. That'll be cool. And um, no, we're, we're not going to Asheville because that's a uh, way over a hundred miles away. 8.6 miles. Take exit 152A. On right to I-77 South. Thank you. But yeah, I'm not driving a hundred some miles today <laughs> because that will require us to um, stay overnight in a hotel, and I really don't feel like doing that. <laughs> Take exit 152A. On right to I-77 South. Okay. But they redid this interchange recently. I haven't been through Statesville since 2004, I don't think. trucks carrying but I hope it don't fall on us Get on this interstate or not, I wonder. <laughs> and there's a bunch of traffic coming, and I need to merge as soon as possible. And no one will let me in. That's nice. Ah, got it. <laughs> Continue one mile, then take exit 15 on right to East Broad Street. Now, I am in completely unfamiliar territory. Never been through here. We may get lost. I may never see home again. But obviously, if you're watching this video, I did make it home. <laughs> in point six miles, take exit 15, on right, to East Broad Street, then turn left. I hear ya. Really hears ya. Really don't care. Take exit 50 on right to East Broad Street, then turn left. Okay, take this exit. Turn left on East Broad Street. The sign here says shopping center. That must be the mall. Let me make it on left and right here. And I probably missed the green there. I think we're pretty close. Oh, um, I see something down there. 
that we're also going to be checking out if we have time. Um, there's a Kmart across the street. Of course, I've never been to that Kmart before, but, you know, um, Kmarts are um, very hard to find these days. And this one probably won't be here much longer, so we might as well document it while we can. In Greensboro, there are no um, Kmarts left, believe it or not. Never would have thought I'd see the day when. Um, Continue point four miles to address sixteen eighty five on left. I never thought I'd see the day when we'd um, live in a world that didn't have Kmart's. But, and we will probably be living in a world um, as well that doesn't have Sears, which is um, which I never would have believed years ago. Point two miles. Arrive at address 1685 on left. Now I've never been to this mall before. And that, there it is right here on the left. But I've only seen it in pictures. But here we are. Signal Hill Mall. So I guess we can uh, drive around the mall. It's an IHOP there. I've never seen a mall anchored by an IHOP. <laughs> I think Arriving at address 1685 on left. I hear you. I think on the left, that used to be a J.C. Penney, but it's not there anymore. Once a mall starts to lose its anchors, well, that's never a good thing. Not a good sign at all. Ugh. Brand new car hitting speed bumps. That's not a good thing either. <laughs> Don't know what this used to be but it's in a separate building from the mall. Okay, that wasn't a, uh, a um, J.C. Penney, but there's a label score over there, but I can't really make it out. This was J.C. Penney, which is also um, no longer in business. Not sure when the J.C. Penney closed. Um, looks like it wasn't that long ago. Used to be a Peebles store right there. That's also closed. Never been to a Peebles, but I've seen them. I've passed them. And here's Belk. This is still open. Not a very big Belk, but it's still probably bigger than the Belk at um, Penrose Mall in Reedsville that we took a look at earlier this year. Oh. Okay, I think we're coming back to the front of the mall now. Yeah, let's kill this brand new car with um, speed bumps. <laughs> Okay, this car's used and three years old, but it's still new to us. <laughs> okay, I believe this is where all the action is at the mall. So, let's get the camera glasses going and take a look inside. And I'm going to park a little back way since this is a new car. Don't want anyone um, opening their door on this car. So that is not nice. There's an AT&T cell phone store there. Alright, let's go check her out. 
Okay, this is um, Billy Core from the future, recording the voiceover here. And I discovered that the mall opened to the public on August 1st, 1973, making it roughly 45 years old. It'll be 45 um, in a couple weeks, I suppose. So, um, right now we're walking into the mall. We're getting close to walking into the mall. Again, I love how um, prominent the IHOP is at this place. <laughs> They're proud of their IHOP, and who can blame them, I guess. Okay, this part right here, um, I had to edit out the audio from the actual mall because the um, because they were playing music that had copyright on it, and I didn't want to get in any trouble with that. So we're entering the mall now. To the right is where IHOP is. Some that man right there is actually talking on a payphone, believe it or not. It's amazing to see a payphone, um, much less one being used. <laughs> now this right here is one of the coolest mall fountains I have ever seen. I wish I had brought a, um, a penny with me, but. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a very impressive looking fountain. Okay, now we're walking toward the, um, the Belk Swing. There's a lot of um, stores here that are out of business, unfortunately. Surprisingly, Bath and Body Works is still there. Old Radio Shack. I miss that store so much. <laughs> and there's Belk. It still seems to be doing pretty well. Did it get a chance to go in there though? I think there was a fountain right there, but it was no longer in service. Again, if the video right here with my camera glasses and elsewhere in this video is a little too shaky. I apologize. Um, it's just the way it is with camera glasses and I can't use any other camera inside of a mall because that will um, be an easy way to get security to throw you out of the mall. <laughs> so the camera glasses have to do. And unfortunately they're not the most stable um, camera solution in the world. And I can't use um, stabilizing and post editing because it's um, because of that stupid time and date at the bottom right that I can't get rid of. So if I use the stabilizer on the uh, power director of my editing software, you'll see the um, date and time just bouncing all over the place. It's a um, music store there that looks like everything is in there. Um, according to their sign, um, they should have been open, but they weren't. I don't know if they had gone out of business. It didn't look like they had. Everything was in there, but who knows. <laughs> okay, we're approaching the former J.C. Penny. I can't recall when it closed, but I think it closed fairly recently. Let's approach the entrance here. able to really get a good look inside, unfortunately. Some kind of stage there for performances. I think to the right was where Peebles used to be. Okay, so I'm going to walk back towards center court. This, um, the audio you're hearing in the background, again, is not from the mall itself. By the way, that used to be a Chick-fil-A, probably. The audio is not from the mall itself. It's some stock ambient shopping mall noise I downloaded on the internet. Yes, yeah, Signal Hill Mall seems to be a local favorite in um, Statesville. 
And that's good to know um, that people um, still support this little um, dilapidated mall. It's a uh, name brand shoe store there. Now we're approaching another um, closed anchor. I don't know what it used to be, but from the way the entrance is designed, I want to guess it was a Sears. But don't quote me on that. I know I should have done research on that, but... Okay. Head back the other way. Bunch of old neon signs here that are no longer functioning. Artist Guild of Statesville. It's a piano store that's not open. Well, it's open, but only on Mondays and Fridays, and I was here on a Thursday. Not that I'm in the market for a piano or anything. There's that great looking fountain again. Um, YouTube user, um, this is Dan Bale, did a much better video about this mall, so check that out if you want something a little bit more professional than this. So, let's head back outside and um, continue with our video. Okay, that was Signal Hill Mall. Um, let's head out of here, run across the street, and check out that Kmart. Like I said, it's hard to find a Kmart that's still in business these days. So when you find one, you gotta take advantage of it. So, again, this is completely unfamiliar territory to me. Never been here before in my life. Well, I've been through Statesville that was going to Asheville back in 2004. And that was it. <laughs> we're about mm, 70 miles or so west of Greensboro. I'm a long way from home. Turn left here. Again, the history behind this Kmart, I have no clue. I didn't even know of its existence until like a week ago when I was researching for my trip. But Statesville is a lot quieter than Charlotte was when I was down there last week, or the other week, I mean. Charlotte is a very busy place. Okay, this is kind of a odd looking Kmart. Definitely designed different from the usual ones. Let's see, do I have a stop sign? Hey, people, when you design parking lots, make sure your stop signs are where they need to be. <laughs> Some other stuff at this shopping center, like a food lion, a Chinese buffet. Oh gosh, I got one of those uh, carousels out front for kids. I used to ride those all the time at the Kmart near my house when it was still there as a kid. Obviously, we're not going to be riding that today. <laughs> so let's find a good parking space. Probably in the back. Fire up the camera glasses once again and head inside. Okay, this is um, Billy from the future once again with um, the voiceover for this portion of the video. I do this, by the way, because um, I would look pretty, um, well, mentally insane if I if someone saw me walking around a mall or a Kmart 
um, talking to myself. <laughs> so that explains this. So let's head on in. Again, um, there was some music playing in the store, so I had to edit that out for some new ambient noise. And the music you are hearing is from one of the um, vintage Kmart background music tapes that um, a former Kmart employee from Illinois uploaded to archive.org a few years ago. And I downloaded all of them, and they are wonderful, and I highly recommend you check them out. And this particular one comes from the October 1989 background tape. So this was from a month before I was born. So anyway, um, this is actually the first Kmart I've been to in probably a couple of years at least. And I've, um, again, never been to this one. An old-fashioned looking pharmacy sign here. It's a little bit, it's laid out a bit differently from um, Kmart's I'm used to. I gotta say that. But as you know, I've always been quite fond of uh, Kmart. It's just sad that they um, are just going away now. Uh, I have a feeling this particular Kmart probably won't last much longer. So um, it's a good thing I got this um, documented. I may have mentioned this before, but um, all the Kmarts in Greensboro um, have closed. And I remember when there was a Kmart just about every quarter of town. And it's a shame. But you know, my, my favorite Kmart was the one closest to me, the one down the road from Carolina Circle Mall. I used to go there with my grandmother a lot, and I would spend the night with her. And we did look at a Kmart once on this channel, um, and that was the one in Winston-Salem back in 2013, but I had to um, be kind of quick with that video because back then I didn't have camera glasses, so um, I wasn't able to get as much footage as I wanted to. I recorded that when they were going out of business. The only Kmart left in my particular area is just outside of Winston-Salem in a town called Clemens. And it's one I went to a few times as a kid. And I actually intend to do an in-depth video on that store because, believe it or not, that Kmart still does a very good business. And, um, but still though, I have a feeling they probably won't last much longer either, especially if Kmart decides to close all of their stores for good. So we'll try and um, visit that Kmart at some point. Here in the electronics section. All the TVs were on a DVD menu for the Jurassic Park DVD. <laughs> Finally reaching back to the other end of the store here. Yeah, Kmart's these days, while they still have a very retro and nostalgic feel to them, they've just gotten kind of plain and generic looking, which is unfortunate, but I guess it's to be expected in their current financial it state. Baking, it's not just what goes into the recipe, but what the recipe goes into. That's why Martha Stewart, our entertainment and lifestyle consultant, prepares to use Great Cook's Bakeware from Meryl Foley. It's all aluminum, so it conducts heat better and cooks more evenly than lots of other bakeware. Miro Foley, just another one of the great names that's at home with Martha Stewart. All right, let's head out of Kmart and uh, proceed with the rest of the video. Okay, I actually, um, just I'm actually just leaving a Goodwill here in Statesville. Um, didn't get it on camera, but you didn't really miss much. I didn't find anything of interest there. Just junk <laughs> so um, our next stop is well we're gonna be leaving um, Statesville and heading um, further west down I-40 toward Hickory to a town called Newton which is where um, Western Steer is that we were talking about earlier the restaurant I haven't been to since I was a kid and I'm hoping it's just like it was when I was a kid I 
because there's only one way to find out. Now, um, what I've been doing um, lately, as you know, I've been going to Charlotte, going to Statesville, going to Hickory. In point two miles, turn right on road to I-40 West. Well, I thank you for the interruption there, young lady. Um, <laughs> well, I used to not do all this traveling, but recently, especially this summer, I've just had so much more motivation than usual to get out and do stuff, go traveling, see North Carolina, albeit to go thrifting and to look at old um, dilapidated malls. <laughs> but... I've just been wanting to get out of the house this summer, do stuff, and I've been making myself do that. And I gotta say, it feels pretty good to do that. So, um, logically I'd get on I-40 East and head home to Greensboro, but instead, like a lunatic, I'm gonna get on I-40 West and head even further away from home <laughs> for no particular good reason. <laughs> so here we go the on-ramp here. Turn right on road to I-40 West. I hear ya. Drive 18 miles. Okay, whatever you say, young lady. That's 185 horsepowers you're hearing there. Okay. Right back on the interstate. Randy Marion Chevrolet over there for those who care. Oh, I heard they redid I 40 throughout Statesville. I didn't realize it was this insane. So I guess I'll uh, get behind another slow moving tractor trailer. They seem to be ramping today for no reason. <laughs> Next exit is um, a state historic site for um, Fort Dobbs. I believe that was a fort that was used during the Seven Year War in the 1700s. It's starting to get kind of cloudy. Don't run any rain. Okay, I'm not going to keep the camera going for the next 17 miles just to show nothing of interest, so I'll stop the camera here and we'll um, resume when we get closer to our destination. So see you there. Okay, um, we're 0.8 miles from our exit and 87 miles from Asheville. And no, we're not going to Asheville. That's too far. <laughs> but um, our exit is coming up in a half a mile. I think we still got a little ways to go after we take that exit, but it shouldn't be much further. It says we'll get there at 11.51 a.m. It is 11.42 a.m., so about nine minutes, I suppose. Take exit 133, on right, to Rock Barn Road, then keep left. Uh, barn made out of rocks. By the way, we're in um, a town called Conover now, in Catawba County. Keep left on Rock Barn Road. Okie dokie. We're heading for a town called Newton, which is just outside of um, Hickory. We, I don't think we'll be going into Hickory today, but there's always next time. Not that there's really anything in Hickory. <laughs> Continue 2.9 miles, then turn left on Northwest Boulevard. Okay, crossing the interstate there. A lot of trucks out today, more than usual, but then again, I'm not really familiar with this part of the state. Normally, when I drive this far, it's to go to um, Raleigh. Raleigh, um, the state capital, which is the complete opposite direction. And the reason I go to Raleigh is because my best friend lives there, and I go see her every now and then. And as exciting as this is, it's still not as exciting as my trips down to Raleigh. But 
This is still fun. You know you're in the country when you see a sign for tractors. <laughs> and you know you're far away from home when you're in a different telephone area code. Which we are. There's really not much to see out here, I don't think. <laughs> There's a Conover Baptist Church. Not that I've ever been there. <laughs> On the way up here, I saw a sign for um, some kind of covered bridge attraction. When we um, head on home, I might stop there just to see what if what it's like. Just so I can say I saw something meaningful today on my trip, <laughs> other than an old mall and an old restaurant. <laughs> We're getting close to... Um, our nostalgic lunch. Yeah, Western Steer, um, they used to be all over the place when I was a kid. Had one in Greensboro and um, one in Winston-Salem. Both of them, not only were they closed, but they were torn down. One in Greensboro um, was torn down to make way for a doctor's office. One in Winston-Salem was torn down to make way for a Red Lobster. The one in Winston-Salem I went to um, quite a bit after church on Sundays growing up. I remember eating there um, the Sunday I was baptized. I actually have a picture of my uncle, who was my godfather, still is obviously, um, holding me in the parking lot of that Western Steer. And that was back in 1993. About five more minutes. I'm not sure if the western steer we're going to is the last one around. There might be a couple others. Seems like there is another one left up in um, West Virginia. And I've um, never been to West Virginia. I always brag about being able to travel. But the sad thing is, the furthest I've ever traveled is Charleston, South Carolina, when I was almost 12 years old for a school field trip. And we, um, in the only two states I've been to, um, other than North Carolina, of course, are South Carolina and Virginia. Never even been to Tennessee. That's pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> 28 years on this earth, and I've hardly seen much of the earth. <laughs> Uh, I got all the time in the world, I suppose. Normally when I'm traveling somewhere, I always have music going on an iPod, um, cell phone, or whatever. But I have it muted right now because of um, copyright reasons since I'm making a video. Most people wouldn't drive all this way for what I'm doing, but I'm not a normal person, as you know. If you've been watching me for um, 12 years now, you should probably know that by now. <laughs> Can you believe that when I um, started my channel, I was only 16? But to be fair, I really haven't changed a whole lot in personality and appearance since I was 16, so, yeah. <laughs> In six, when I was 16, I drove a 1995 Honda Accord. Well, I rode in a 1995 Honda Accord I didn't drive yet, and I was into 90s nostalgia. I've come a long way, haven't I? <laughs> now, of course, we're not driving the 95 Accord today. I thought about driving it since, you know, it's been a big part of my YouTube channel for all these years. And it would um, be appropriate to drive it for the 10,000 subscribers special, but, um, you know, it's 23 years old, has over 200,000 miles, and while it would probably be fine... Miles. Turn left on Northwest Boulevard. 
oh, I love how you interrupt me. But it has, it's 23 years old, has over 200,000 miles now, and while it would probably be okay to drive all this way, it's best to just play it safe. And plus, I wanted to play with this new car. <laughs> I believe we turn left up here. Turn left on Northwest Boulevard. Again, I've never been anywhere near here before. This is all foreign land to me. Okay, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be seeing any mountains today. At least I don't think. Continue 2.5 miles to address 334. On right. I don't think we've gone far enough west to see any mountains. Okay, we're in the town of Newton. Old shopping center over there. Okay, two miles till nostalgia. Last time I went to a Western Steer, I actually remember it was um, spring of 1999 when my grandparents um, took me up to Mount Airy, which is, um, by the way, where Andy Griffith was born. And we went to um, Western Steer there, and um, they had already closed the Western Steers in Greensboro and Winston-Salem, so it had already been a while since I'd last been there in 1999. And that's no longer there, I don't think. And that was 19 years ago, so I guess it's been 19 years since I've been to Western Steer. And again, let's hope that it's <laughs> they haven't changed any in the last 19 years. I don't know if you saw it on camera, but over to the left was a gray pizza hut. That was unusual. <laughs> this is probably the furthest I've ever gone to do a YouTube video. For the silliest reason. <laughs> By the way, um, other than the um, camera glasses that we used at the mall and the Kmart, this video has been recorded with my uh, smartphone because it's easier to mount it in the car on the dashboard than it is my actual video camera. And as you know, my video camera would probably um, not hold a charge long enough to make this video. <laughs> All right, less than a mile away from the from the nostalgia. Don't take much to excite me, does it? <laughs> okay, we're on South Business US three twenty one. Half a mile. Getting butterflies in my stomach. Get 
in 0.4 miles. Arrive at address 334. On right. Okay. Oh, there's an IGA um, grocery store over to the left. They don't have those back home. Been to the ones in Myrtle Beach before. All right, we're getting close. Arriving at address 334, on right. At Western Steer. Same sign and everything that I remember. Oh yeah, here we are. Yes, this is a steakhouse and it's a buffet. Kind of a smaller version of um, Golden Corral. And we're here just at lunchtime, five minutes to noon. So we picked a great time to be here, oh yeah. <laughs> See if I can get a shot of the front. Uh, I can, uh, sit right here. Yeah, here it is, Western Steer. Uh, well, let me park and we'll commence with the nostalgia. Western Steer wants you to get more home style cooking for your money. Settle in for a buffet of fried chicken, baked ham, roast beef, and all your home-style favorites. Plus salads, desserts, and more on our buffet bar. Enjoy all you want for just $5.49 every Saturday night and all day Sunday at Western Steer. Look for other hot new buffet bar features at participating Western Steer restaurants. Get more variety and value at Western Steer. All right, here we go, folks. Okay, this part looks familiar. WBTV Charlotte. It's all coming back to me. And you're going to laugh at me for being all southern right now, getting all this food. <laughs> but I haven't eaten since breakfast. Give me a break. Oh yeah. I hope they still have um, broccoli where you can put cheese on it. Okay, as my dad would say when I was a kid, commence the eating. Okay, that was absolutely delicious. Um, 
just like it was 20 years ago. If you're in the Hickory area, please, by all means, check this place out. So, um, what's next? Well, I'm going to um, check out a couple of Goodwills in this area. I'm not going to put them on camera because um, that's kind of LGR territory. <laughs> so, um, I think what we'll probably do next is um, go to that uh, covered bridge. And then we'll probably head back to Greensboro, um, which is about 100 miles away, I think. <laughs> oh, well. I'll uh, talk to you then. It's not much, but you might be able to see some mountains down there. So yeah, we got to see some mountains today. Not much, but who knows, we might see some more later. Okay, we're about two miles from that covered bridge. Um, this is a um, unplanned stop on our journey. I just happened to see a sign for it and it looked intriguing and I looked it up. It's free to go to, so why not check it out? <laughs> We're in a little sleepy town called Claremont. Yeah, it's a cozy little town, it looks like. I believe this is their downtown. Yeah. Good place, good place to settle down and raise your kids, I tell you. Almost went Hank Hill there, but. <laughs> it's their. Yeah, this year marks Claremont's 125th anniversary. According to that flag back there. So, um, covered bridges. I, I went to a couple along the Blue Ridge Parkway when I was 10 years old. But I think that was about it. So, um, yeah, this will be the first one I've been to in, I guess, 18 years. And it better be worth the drive. <laughs> and I also want you to see what the town looked like. Yeah, this trip has been a lot less hectic than my Charlotte trip the other week. Because, um, unlike this, where I just went to a couple of small towns, Charlotte is the biggest city in North Carolina and is close in size to Atlanta. It's, it's a madhouse there. It's a nice place, but it's a madhouse. <laughs> and I'm not a city slicker. <laughs> okay, about one mile to go till we get to the covered bridge. Um, it has a name, but I forget what it was. <laughs> we'll, we'll, We'll find out when we get there, I, I reckon. Industrial entrance, ooh. Okay. Again, never been here in my entire life. This is all foreign land, but I think we're half a mile from the bridge. In point four miles, arrive at address 4160 on left. Okay. It's part of a park. Bunker Hill Covered Bridge. Arriving at address 4160, on left. Well, you know what, you can shut up because I didn't go the way you wanted me to. <laughs> like a little, um, little park. It's a historic site, apparently. So, well, let's go check it out, shall we? There's an old-fashioned historic porta potty Okay, looks like we got some hiking to do to get to the covered bridge on a trail right now. There's a little creek down there. And there are bugs flying around me. 
And I've only probably worn bug spray five times in my whole life. Squirrel. Of course, I get, I see those all the time at home. Hope I'm going the right way. If I get lost in the mountains, that's, <laughs> that's not going to be a fun thing. I think I got like 70% battery on my phone. Of course, I'm rec recording video on it right now, so that's going to drain the battery a little bit. There's an uncovered bridge. <laughs> I swear, if I'm going the wrong way, I, 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 um, I referred to a trail map. I don't know how accurate it was. It's like people um, have been writing stuff along here. Junie loves Ricky. Well, good for them. I'm glad. He's on the other side here. Wouldn't it be funny if I jumped off this bridge and just dove into that creek? I don't think so, so I'm not going to do it. I don't know if that's a road right there. Or... Well, my car's over there, so did I just make a circle? <laughs> This is one of the rare times in my life where I could probably use a GoPro. Might be a waterfall back there, and I'm not going through that. Just to see something that probably isn't a waterfall. Okay, I don't know how much of that recorded or not. <laughs> so I hit a wrong button there. But we're near the bridge. This is probably the most nature you've ever seen on this channel in the 12 years of its existence. But as you know, I'm pretty geeky. And... Outside time is rare for me. Oops. We've reached a dead end. <laughs> but hey, there's a wooden bench. Well, let's go back around here then. Now there are people up there on the bridge. I don't I, I don't want to get them on camera because of privacy reasons. Okay, I think we're the only ones here now. But here's Bunker Hill Covered Bridge. Constructed in 1895, restored in 1994, and designated in 2001. The only remaining example of the improved uh, timber bridge, patented by, by uh, something in 1839. Paul's that, if you want to read it. More, um, <laughs> little graffiti there. Some information on the bridge. Civil War, I believe. All right, here we go. Let's walk across the bridge. There's the creek, or as some people call it, the crick. 
Not around here, though. <laughs> and it is covered in graffiti. Wow. No, I'm not going to write graffiti in here. Okay. Very, very sedateful in here. And if one of these boards were to fail, well, I suppose my existence would fail. Right on the other end now. Very, very interesting. Because I don't get to travel a whole lot. Absolutely love to travel more, but I will someday. But I'm happy to have been able to do what I have done today. I don't know if I should be down here or not, actually. This is another look at the bridge from the side. So this is a... This bridge is 124 years old, I believe. It was built in 1894. I think it was covered in 1900. 118 years ago. Well, let us walk back through. Oh, this is so stupid of me. <laughs> hey, but the phone survived. Okay, I'm gonna stop camera here and take a few pictures of the bridge for um, my friends and family. Okay, I think I'm gonna head back to the car because the humidity suddenly arrived. <laughs> and I think my deodorant has decided to um, no longer exist. So I think I better head on back to the car and with that, head back to Greensboro. Okay, um, about to um, get on to um, Interstate 40 eastbound to head back to Greensboro, where my home is. And it'll be glad, it'll be nice to finally get home, which wasn't a very long trip. Well, it, was long, it took a while to get here, but I didn't stay around here too long. But I had a good time, and I hope you did. Um, so, um, drive 49 miles on I-40 East. Okay, I believe I don't have to do anything until I get to Winston-Salem. Of course, I really don't need the GPS. I just stay on I-40 and I'm home. <laughs> but GPS equals technology and technology is fun. <laughs> For the most part, until it gets annoying. <laughs> All right, we're about to cross the Catawba River into Iredell County where Statesville is where we were earlier. So again I want to um, express my deep deep gratitude to all of you for your support over the past 12 years of this channel's existence. If it, Again I know I said this before if it wasn't for you folks giving me motivation to do all this, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> and plus, it's a lot of fun, too. It's a great hobby. I've just, I've always enjoyed making videos ever since I was a little kid, actually. And when I got 
when, when my dad let me use his brand new JVC VHSC camcorder that he got back in 96. And ever since then, I've just enjoyed making videos. So, um, again, thank you for your support. Um, let's see if we can make it to 20,000 subscribers someday soon. I don't know when that'll be. I went to some survey site that estimated that we'll get to um, 20,000 sometime between 2020 and 2022 which that seems a little too far away i i'm not sure how accurate that is i think we can um do better than that so let's get to 20,000 by the end of the decade end of the 2010s let's get to 20,000 let's see if we can make that happen folks so anyway um hope you enjoyed our journey today throughout western north carolina so until next time, this is Billy Kaur saying thank you and signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Kaur signing off.